Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hello and welcome to this episode of our show. This is your host, Keith Doherty. Today, our special guest is top real estate agent, Tracy Pina of Caldwell Banker based out of Los Gatos, California. Tracy is with Caldwell Banker in the Los Gatos, California office. She's a consistent top producer, ranking in the top 3% of NRTs, more than 44,000 agents nationwide. She's been selling homes since 2003. All right, with all that said, Tracy, welcome to the show. Thanks, Keith. Glad to have uh, this opportunity to talk about real estate with you. Tracy, I guess if we could start for our listeners, what led you into real estate? Was it something that you always knew you wanted to do, or did you maybe stumble into it? I really stumbled into it. I was in high tech working as a liaison with big corporations to Wall Street, and it was very exciting, but it became monotonous, and I was looking for something that would hold my interest and keep me excited about getting up every morning. And my parents had dabbled in building and buying real estate, and it just came to me one morning, and I thought, maybe I should do that. So that's how I stumbled into it 14 years ago. And can you talk a little bit about what personal attributes, traits, or qualities you think have most contributed to the success that you've had in real estate? I think that to be successful, you've got to be a self-starter. You've got to be really self-motivated. And I think personality can play into that. What I love about real estate is anybody can succeed in it because there's different personalities in the world and there's a realtor for some for everybody out there. For me, I'm big on lists and writing goals and putting things in front of me. When I first got into the business, I was a heavy participant in Brian Buffini and really just followed his directions and guidance and made myself my goals and woke up every morning and read them, and I still do. So I think that's been huge for me in keeping motivated and keeping successful. And do you think you'd give our listeners an example of when these traits have played a role in your path toward success? I think that the best example would be when life requires you to take some time off of work and maybe you're out for a couple months, which I have, I have been there. And when you come back, your business is still kind of just going because you've managed to reach out to everybody once a month by some form, whether it's nowadays email or by mail, and you've just kept that business going where you have a good referral business. So it's paid off for me to really have a master plan for my business and treat it as a business and follow that business plan every year. And uh, Tracy, I think when, when anybody builds success, that sometimes the path to get there is, is not always a smooth one. Sometimes there's bumps in the road and trials. So can you talk a little bit about some of the adversities and trials that you had to overcome in order to achieve your goals? Sure. I didn't have too many adversities. I'd say that the market crash was probably the biggest one, and I feel like any realtor that's been through that can make it through any time. And we do see market fluctuations all the time in our local market. But 2007 and 2008, nine, there was a lot of realtors that got flushed out of the business. And the key thing for me was staying positive and staying focused. And it really was, 2008 was one of my best years because of that, because I didn't get rattled. In real estate, I noticed that when people get rattled, when they don't have business, it shows. And when you're meeting people at open houses, it comes across that you are desperate. And so if you always have a positive mindset that the business will come, that you are the right person for the job, then I think that carries you through the highs and lows. Excellent. And I guess, you know, kind of on top of that, what, what kept you going when, when you hit these obstacles? Why didn't you give up? What's your driving force? Well, I knew that I loved real estate. I knew that I just loved every bit of it. I love the negotiation. I love the day-to-day. Uh, I love the new people that I meet. And I think that was really a motivating force. But what else would I do that would bring me this much satisfaction in life? And I guess, you know, looking forward, what's your vision for your business and your career over the next five years? 
So the, the thing that I've been working on most is really stepping up and trying to get a handle on the social media platform. Uh, I'm not as young as I used to be, and I notice a lot of young agents that come to the office, it is like nothing for them to post on social media or to be engaged. And it's been a little bit of a learning curve for us that have been around a little longer. And so I spend a lot of nights just combing the Internet and social media tips and website tips, who's using Instagram, who my viewers are, what time to post. And I think this is something that is really important for realtors that have been in the business a long time because we can always lean on our experience and our contract knowledge. But if we're not engaging new buyers and new sellers, it can die off, just like the people before us. So I think that's the biggest thing for me in the next two immediate and five years and beyond that is to stay very current on the platforms that people are using and just to know your market. And I guess um, kind of on top of that, what do you feel is the best way that you market yourself as a real estate professional so that you can have continual growth? It's utilizing those platforms to my current sphere of influence and also capitalizing on anybody new that I meet. And I'll say I'm not as good at it as I used to be because it's different. It's different for me to meet people and then put them on an email list where I felt like that used to be intrusive, but now that's the norm. People don't want to receive something in the mail, and if they do, they probably throw it away, which it does get your name in front of them for that split second, but I have to constantly remind myself that email or social media is the norm now, and that's the method that you need to reach out to these people. So just continuing to stretch myself, I suppose. Excellent. And I think sometimes when it comes to real estate agents that the public sometimes has a, a misconception or, you know, they look at them in a different light. What, what do you think the biggest misconception or myth that people have about working with a real estate agent? I think the majority of real estate agents do it for the reasons that I do it because we love it and we love helping people. And the biggest misconception out there is that realtors are self-centered, all they care about is the paycheck, it's just about the dollar that they're going to slam you into a property. And I, I truly don't believe that. I feel like everybody that I come across is so genuine and we're really just here to help. And sometimes people are reluctant to engage with a realtor because they feel there might be some pressure to buy right away. We're really, because we're so tapped into this network of agents and this business, it's really just for us more about sharing our knowledge and helping people. At least that is for me, and I feel like that's the way it is for a lot of my colleagues. So I'd say that's the biggest misconception that I see in real estate. And Tracy, let's say you get a call from a family member or a friend, and they're in another state, and they want to sell their home. Obviously, with your experience and your connections, you could probably do a referral uh, or look up an agent for them. But from a general advice standpoint, what advice would you give them about selecting an agent that could best serve their needs? I think it's always important to talk to people that have sold and see who they refer, and then interview agents. I think that there's definitely territories in California where the listing agent just, or the, excuse me, the listing presentation just doesn't happen. But I think that's your best opportunity to really understand what that realtor is going to do for you and to know what they're like and what it would be like working with them. People have told me before when I'm interviewing for a listing, I don't need to like you. I just need to know that you're going to do the best job. But in the end, you do spend a lot of time with your realtor, and you do need to like them because you do need to be excited to pick up a phone call from them or call them and ask them a question. And so I think the listing presentation is still a very important factor when picking a realtor. Excellent. And what general area do you cover? Uh, obviously based out of California, but what general area do you cover from a uh, real estate services standpoint? Sure. Anything surrounding Los Gatos. So Los Gatos, Saratoga, Campbell, and then most of San Jose. There's great pockets in San Jose, which are a great fit for people that love Los Gatos but can't quite afford Los Gatos. 
So areas like Willow Glen, Cambrian, Almaden Valley, Blossom Valley, they're all great neighborhoods. They offer a very similar feel. And that's really where I know the most agents and I do the most business. So I feel like it can really guide people and listen to what they're looking for in a neighborhood and a home and find them the right, the right fit for their price point. Excellent. And if somebody's looking for real estate services or an agent in, uh, in those general areas, what's the best way they can find out more information about you and how you can help them? Online. I've got my handle for Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. It's all at Los Gatos Living. So at symbol Los Gatos Living. And then I'm on LinkedIn at Tracy Pina. You can search Tracy Pina and I'll come up, or you can search Lost Out of Living. And so those are the two easiest ways to find me. Excellent. Well, Tracy, I obviously want to thank you for taking time out of your schedule to come here today and share all your professional real estate experience with our listeners. And if you're listening and you want to learn more about Tracy, obviously you can go to her, her site, like she said, or, or contact her via the other uh, forms of social media. Also below this uh, interview, we'll have a link to her site and any other contact information we have so you can connect with her and see how she can help you with your real estate needs. So with that said, everybody, until our next show, have a great day and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.